Hello, Queen's Orchard. My name is Ina. And my name is Sophia. And welcome to Kyoto TV. Spring break begins after school today and lasts through April 1st. We wish you all a relaxing and refreshing spring break. March 31st is Easter for Western Christians. We wish all the Christians in our community a happy Easter. The Junior Caregiver Meeting, originally scheduled for this week, is rescheduled for Thursday, April 4th from 6.30 to 7.30 p.m. via Zoom. Topics covered will include internships, post-secondary options, college search and applications, financial aid, testing requirements, and additional opportunities. Kyo Theater is proud to present Chicago Teen Edition. Performances will be on the Fridays of April 5th and 12th at 7 p.m. and the Saturdays of April 6th and 13th at 2 p.m. and 7.30 p.m. Tickets can be purchased with cash or check at the door or through GoFam with a small service fee. We advise all audience members that our production of Chicago Teen Edition is rated PG-13. April 10th will be the end of quarter three. While students have the day off, MCPS will be hosting a Grow Your Own Career Day from 9 to noon at Northwest High School. Students are invited to learn about job opportunities and careers available in Montgomery County and take advantage of their on-the-spot interviews. The RSVP deadline is April 1st. That's all for the news and on to the show. Yay! <laughs> Historically, in the film industry, women were not typically given a voice when it came to almost every job. Female writers and directors were very rare, but recently things have been changing for the better. It definitely should not have taken this long, but the Oscars broke a record this year regarding the number of nominated Best Picture movies with female directors. The Bechtel test is a set of requirements that test women's representation in a movie. There's no actual need to pass the test to get a movie released, and a film not passing the test does not immediately mean it is sexist. The requirements to pass the test are really simple. Two female characters, preferably named, have to have one conversation that's not about a man. Easy, right? When I first heard of this test, I thought it was a bit silly, because there's no way that many films could fail it. Keep in mind, however, that the test is not the defining factor in a movie being sexist. A movie could be very sexist but still pass the Bechdel test, or be very feminist but still fail. For example, one of the films I was most shocked to discover didn't pass the test was Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. The film has many strong female characters who are great representations, they just don't interact much if at all throughout the film, with the focus being on the main duo of Miles and Peter. What does good female representation even look like? Well, female characters have typically been written by male writers, and while there's nothing necessarily wrong about that, many movies before the 2010s only have female characters for the purpose of being love interests, damsels in distress, and vessels to move the plot forward than actual characters. They were never written to be more complicated people with character arcs and personalities. This is not true for every film, but it is true for a vast majority of them at this time. Take the James Bond movies, for example. In each film, there's a different female love interest who either dies or is written out with no explanation by the next film. And unfortunately, this is a common reoccurrence in many movies. Even in more present movies, such as the live-action remake of Mulan, her character is too overpowered and doesn't go through many struggles, which makes her unrealistic and unrelatable. On the other hand, the animated movie shows her struggle and training, which comes to show that women's representation has not necessarily improved over time. But on a brighter note, unrealistic representation is not the case for all movies. In Marvel's Into the Spider-Verse, Spider-Gwen is amazing representation. She's a very powerful character, which makes sense since she's fully trained Spider-Person, but you can tell she has internal conflicts and personal growth that she needs to go through, which is further developed in the second film. And although they weren't recent, the early Alien movies show Ellen Ripley as a flawed and relatable character, representing a woman who doesn't fit into conventional stereotypes, yet overcomes obstacles and fights her own battles just the same as any man would. Choose a cast member to put on a show-stopping double act with. Alina. Alina. Oh. Yeah. Up. <laughs> Hello, I play Velma Kelly. 
play Rock the Heart. Well, I'm playing Amos Hart. And I'm playing Matron Mama Morton. And I'm playing Billy Flynn. And I'm playing Miss Mary Sunshine. Today, we are taking a BuzzFeed quiz to figure out what Chicago character we really are. Choose a reason you might want to get rid of your significant other. They pop their bubble gum really loudly. I would murder someone for that. You find out they're married to six other people. Six other people is kind of a deal breaker. Choose a song lyric from Chicago that speaks to you. He had it coming. No, I'm no one's wife, but oh, I love my life. That is by far my favorite lyric. You're just bagel. <laughs> You're just bagel. <laughs> Choose a character from Chicago to go on a date with. Mona. Give me your yeah. one. one. Choose a celebrity to play Roxy in Chicago. Julie Ragbeer. I don't know who that is. I am not an Ariana Grande lover at the moment, guys. Wow. Choose a QO staff member to put into Chicago. I have to see Ms. Balfour in Chicago. This is Balfour. Mr. Jernigan. Mr. Jernigan, because I feel like I need to see that other side of him. <laughs> oh my gosh! Oh, oh my gosh! <laughs> oh my gosh! Okay, I got- Oh! I love my answer. Uh, I can live with it. Rosa Parks' activism led to which key movement in the civil rights movement? The Montgomery bus boycott, Greensboro sit-in, or the March on Washington? The bus boycott. Yeah. Which disability and women's rights activist was known for being the first deaf-blind person to write a book and earn a bachelor's degree? Elizabeth War Picard, Judith Heumann, or Helen Keller? Helen Keller. Which activist co-founded and presided over the, the National Women's Suffrage Association? Andy Gordon, Susan B. Anthony, or Lucretia Mott? Susan B. Anthony. Who was the first African-American woman to win the Nobel Prize for Literature? Bell Hooks, Toni Morrison, or Alice Walker? Alice Walker. That's wrong. <laughs> Which of the following pilots was the first female pilot to operate a transatlantic flight in 1932? Amelia Earhart, Harriet Quimby, Ida D. Acosta. The first one. <laughs> Jane Austen's most famous novels include Pride and Prejudice, Persuasion, and Jane Eyre, Emma, or Wuthering Heights. Little Woman. Simone Biles is the most decorated athlete in which of the following sports? Athletics, figure skating, or gymnastics? Gymnastics. Which of the following women was the first female U.S. Secretary of State? Madeleine Albright, Condoleezza Wright, Hillary Rodham Clinton. Uh, the first one. No, Hillary. Hillary. I trust the first one. The first one. It's the first one. You have to come with the consensus. Okay, the first okay. one. Okay. The We're first doing the first one. one. Yeah. The first one's right. Already felt it in the air, or you might have already seen the changes, but daylight savings time has officially taken place. That's right, Sunday day of last week, March 10th, was the official day for daylight savings time. The yearly tradition where we change our clocks forward or backwards an hour, which also means you either gain or lose an hour of sleep. In this case, We've already lost an hour, and you might have already felt that hour gone this past week. It's been a tradition every single year since I can remember. But these last few years, daylight savings time has been up in the air. In 2022, something interesting happened in the government, where apparently the U.S. Senate unanimously approved the Sunshine Protection Act, a bill that would basically just make daylight savings time permanent. However, it didn't really work out, and the House of U.S. Representatives actually didn't pass this bill across. Now, there was a recent version in 2023, but again, no progress has really been made to get this bill in change. Now, even though this is a surprise to many, there actually are a few states who don't even do daylight savings time, like Hawaii and Arizona. So who knows? Maybe this could be the last daylight savings time. Well, not right now. Because in November 3rd will be the next Daylight Savings Time day, where we will 
go back an hour again. But hey, hopefully this segment has, has been a reminder to change those clocks. You gotta watch, or if you got a, you know, cool little clock on the wall, or you use an alarm clock, you know, I think it's better, you know, uh, change. Yeah, change, change that alarm clock, buddy. Which athlete just broke the NCAA scoring record? Caitlin Clark. Caitlin Clark. Was it the Watchman? Caitlin Clark. Quincy Wilson. Caitlin Clark. Serena Williams. Which woman passed Michael Phelps with the most world swimming titles? Serena Williams. Katie Ledecky. Michael Phelps. Katie Ledecky. <laughs> Which woman tennis player holds the most Grand Slam titles? I forgot her name. Serena Williams. What's that one girl from All American, Olivia? Yeah, she played tennis. Serena Williams. Which woman soccer player holds the quickest time to score a hat trick in a single game? Oh my god, soccer, really? Mm, I don't know. Alex Morgan. Don't know any women soccer players, I'm sorry. Uh, Carly Lloyd. Me, I am. Which girls lacrosse player holds the most goals in QOHS history? Emma Christensen. The yeah. tech, bro. I, I don't know her name, but. <sighs> I don't know her name, but um, I know she goes to Virginia Tech. Uh, Emma Christensen. Do it. Do it.